Are you afraid of being wrong? I've been noticing a lot of people having a fear of being wrong, telling everyone how right they are, how confident they can beat up on other, other people, how superior their intellect is. And I realize that they're not aware of the little death, the mind killer of fearing, of fear actually. Frank Herbert was the one that said fear is the mind killer, the little death. Um, Whatever you're afraid of, if you're afraid of it, you're suffering the little death. Your thinking is corrupted by your fear, so it's the mind killer. There's some useful assumptions that are buried within this idea. And useful assumption one is I'm probably wrong. Of anything I am certain of, I am probably certain I'm wrong. Also, who are your friends? Real friends prove me wrong. Some people will tell you you're wrong, but are they your real friends? I say those people are either lazy or they're my enemies. They tell me I'm wrong. They don't prove it to me. They don't show me why I'm wrong. Reality is not transparent. As much as it may seem transparent, as much as we may think we know what's going on, there's a problem. And this problem has to do with information. So I want to start from a physical model of how this happens. Each action has an equal and opposite reaction, energy. Not necessarily in the same direction, thus it can be redirected. It may cause an informational cascade. What is interesting about reality what is a part of our reality is informational and as such we can't determine the relationship between energy and its cause. My robot love. Now you could say well what are you talking about here? This has to do with there are things we'll want to value we don't yet know about. And your robot love would certainly fit that description, so I started with that idea. Bad models are good. And the classic model that I like to use for this example is the flat earth model. If you can't explain how we know the flat earth model is wrong, then you're not then you don't understand the usefulness of the round earth model or why the round earth model works. Gravity itself actually proves the round earth model. People knew the earth was round long before we had direct ev evidence. Indirect evidence has existed for a long time and gravity is actually one of the best predictors of the round earth model. And if using a flat earth model to explain why the round earth model is true is perhaps one of the better ways of thinking about the round earth model. Mistakes should be celebrated. Speaking of gravity, one of my favorite stories to tell is when my old friend taught me, Pat Cole, proved my theory of gravity wrong. I was trying to argue that gravity was different for heavier objects than lighter ob objects, not really thinking through how we wouldn't know how you wouldn't know it's true. And then he explained the experiment of the feather and the hammer on the moon. And he realized instantly what that meant. Now, I don't remember all the thinking that was in my mind at that time, but I knew with, with certainty that um, my theory was wrong. And it's a day I cel celebrate to this day. Good ideas can handle bad information. Now, this is something I think is probably the most profound idea I, I realized and why it's important. And the reason it's important is this. Okay, they committed the crime. What benefit is it in hurting them? And what I'm basically saying is, what if the information is bad? What if they didn't commit the crime? And then I would have hurt someone that didn't commit a crime, so didn't deserve to be hurt in any sense of, of justice that you might have. So what benefit is it to hurt someone that's committed a crime? Or someone who didn't? Because we don't know. So good ideas handle bad information. And that is my
useful assumptions for the day.